What's up, my mathletes? That's right, Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, we're going to take a look at circular trig functions. That's right, functions that go round and round and round the unit circle. But first, let's go ahead and dive into what that means. So what we're going to do is start by drawing a reference triangle here in quadrant number one. So quadrant number one, we know that's going to be in the upper right-hand corner. So our reference triangle is just going to go like this. And we're going to put theta, our angle, right there in the angle that's closest to the origin. Now, we want to drop a perpendicular from that point x, y. So here's our point x, y right up here. Now, of course, we know going across, we're going to have x. And going up, that's y. So the x is really, what I want you to kind of do is think about it like the length. And the y is going to be like the width. All right, more on that later. But that is going to represent the length and width of this triangle. And then we're going to have this radius. The radius, the line that extends from the origin all the way to the point x, y is going to be labeled as r. So to figure those out from the location of theta, so we know that the sine of theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so the opposite side is y and the hypotenuse side is r. When we take a look at the cosine of theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be x over r. And then lastly, we're going to have our tangent function here, and a tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, or the width over the length, or the y value over the x value. So those are the big three that you should kind of remember from your geometry days going back in time. Now those are the big three. Now we're going to take a look at the reciprocals of those functions and those are the three new ones and they're going to be secant of theta, cosecant of theta, and cotangent of theta. So all of these values are just going to be the reciprocals of sine or cosine or tangent. And actually what I want to do is kind of get these guys organized. I want to put the cosecant one here and then the secant one there. And cotangent sounds like tangent, so they'll go together. So cosecant, so remember uh, from previous lessons, cosecant, instead of being like a uh, sine that was opposite over hypotenuse, we'll take the reciprocal of that for cosecant. So that is going to be r over y. When we take a look at the secant, that is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine function, which is r over x. And then the reciprocal of cotangent, well, that's going to be, or the reciprocal of cotangent is tangent, and uh, or 1 over tangent. So that is going to be, instead of y over x, x over y. That's it. That's all you got to do. So those are all possible trig ratios using x, y, and r. So sine, cos, tan, and then cosecant, secant, and cotangent tangent. So with that said, same idea here for example number two. So I'm going to let you pause the video for a moment after we get this one set up and then come back and check your answers. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, quadrant number two is where we're going to have our point x, y. So theta will be right there. Our point is going to be up here. And then we know the x is on this side, the y is in this spot, and then the radius is always going to be r. So based on that, what I want you to do is do the same thing. Sine of theta is going to be some ratio. Cosine of theta is going to be a ratio. And so is tangent of theta. And then once you have those three sorted out, then go ahead and do the reciprocals of sine, cos, and tangent. The cosecant of theta, the secant of theta, and the cotangent of theta. And you're going to do that same thing after example two for example number three. But this time we are in quadrant number three. So this time when you draw your reference triangle, you'll be down here like this. Theta is right there. And same thing. X is going to be along the x-axis. Y is going to be the long side in quadrant three there. And your radius is always the part that extends out to wherever our point x, y is on our graph. And then lastly, we're going to have quadrant number four to draw a little piece in there. So quadrant number four, our reference triangle would look like this. Theta is closest to the origin. And from there, we would have our x coordinate, our y coordinate, and then our radius. So for all of these, go ahead and find sine, cos, and tan, secant, cosecant, cotangent, and come on back in a moment after you've got all four of those done. And let's see how you did. 
All right, how'd you guys do? You should notice a pattern here. No matter which quadrant we're drawing that reference triangle in, whether it's in quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, or quadrant number four, the trig ratios, the six possible trig ratios, are all going to be the same ratios. Sine's always going to be the y coordinate over the radius. Cosine will always be the x coordinate over the radius, and so on and so forth. So hopefully you see that pattern and you are ready to roll as we get ready to take a look at these pieces right here. So more on that in the next video, so be sure to check it out. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a good day, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out.